Well, Swift recently announced a series of major advancements in its development of an innovative solution for interlinking central bank digital currencies, known as CBDCs. The cooperative has revealed that three central banks are integrating its CBDC connector solution into their infrastructure for beta testing. And in parallel, more than 30 leading financial institutions from around the world are now experimenting with the solution in a new sandbox to explore further user uh, use cases. So to discuss these developments in more detail, we're joined now by our guest, Richard Ross, payment market infrastructure expert, Europe Swift, and Adeline Bachelary, the deputy director of innovation and financial market infrastructures at the Banque de France, and Carmen Ray, Swift global product owner at Banco Santander. Welcome to all three of you. Thanks Thank so much you. for taking the time to be here. Adeline, I'll start with you. Um, CBDCs, a hot topic here at Cybus. Uh, just give us an overview on the status of CBDC development around the world. Yeah, Actually, most central banks are exploring uh, CBDCs for both retail and uh, wholesale payments, uh, as found by the last BI survey published uh, last summer and more than half of them uh, are uh, experimenting or working on a pilot. But beyond these figures, uh, actually the question is, is not uh, if, but when uh, we will uh, integrate CBDCs. And um, what matters is how central banks will integrate uh, CBDCs in the financial and monetary system. Um, so in practice, this means that uh, we will have to to analyze all this, uh, all the impacts and all the um, uh, yes, all the impacts of uh, CBDCs. Uh, so, for instance, uh, uh, what would be the best design to integrate uh, CBDCs in the financial and monetary system? What would be the the, the best design for improving uh, cross-border payments? What link with the uh, emerging uh, fast payment systems? Um, so uh, actually, um, so that's why a, a few uh, central banks have uh, launched CBDCs, but we are moving fast. And in particular in Europe, uh, within the Euro system on the retail side, um, we, we, we are finishing the, the investigation phase launched two years ago. And uh, the governing council uh, will soon uh, uh, decide if um, we, whether to move to a to, to preparation phase. Uh, it doesn't mean that we will launch yet uh, a, a digital euro. Uh, we will, uh, the governing council of the European Central Bank will decide uh, after the legislation phase at some point uh, in 2025, actually. Mm. And regarding the wholesale side, um, within the euro system, we have just launched uh, an exploratory work um, on the potential solutions for um, the settlement of wholesale uh, transactions recorded on DLTs. And this is particularly important as uh, we have now this new regulation in Europe, the DLT pilot regime, uh, which allows um, financial players to issue and to, 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 to have transactions uh, on DLTs. Uh, so we have uh, concrete trials. And uh, in, uh, in that respect, all the experiments uh, uh, made by the Banque de France um, will directly contribute to this work. Mm. Carmen, as a commercial bank, what opportunities are CBDCs offering for, for cross-border uh, settlements? Okay, so regarding CBDCs and their impact on cross-border payments, we need to take into account that CBDCs have been designed from scratch according to some very clear design principles, which is fostering innovation, automation, traceability, security, and reducing cost. Also, they are enabling a full new set of 24-7 instant payments. So the point is that all these features will apply also to cross-border payments if we are able to interlink these different ecosystems. And this is why these initiatives regarding the interoperability of CBDCs are so important, so that we are able to cross their initial uh, domestic jurisdictions and borders of these CBDCs. Richard, let me bring you into the conversation. Uh, can you talk about some of the key drivers for SWIFT as it explores CBDC interoperability? Uh, absolutely. So I think Adeline and Carmen touched on a number of different areas that absolutely are key drivers for us. But I think if I boil them down to some of the fundamentals from a SWIFT perspective, it's all about instant and frictionless payments. It's all about reduc uh, reduction in fragmentation and really looking at the role that SWIFT can play as a network and networks in this space. So looking at each of those in, in sort of detail, if you think about the instant and frictionless journey, 
SWIFT was founded 50 years ago with that goal in mind. And I think it's important in this new digital paradigm to understand that none of those fundamentals have changed. The objectives required in this new world of digital currencies and tokenized assets of bringing the world together and connecting still remains a fundamental principle of what SWIFT's about and absolutely what we're committed to the community to support. I think when we talk about fragmentation, CBDCs are on a momentum. And I think Adeline touched on it lovely when she said that it's more about when, not if. Mm. We know there's momentum building. So it's important for us as SWIFT and it's a key part of our innovation agenda to ensure that we can support both digital currencies and tokenized assets to seamlessly scale if and when they're finally deployed into the financial ecosystem. And then I think lastly, with regards to network of networks, I'm sure there's many in the audience who have heard this term well and truly. It's really about, again, the role that SWIFT can play. We've got a number of participants across the globe that have multiple digital networks that they plug into. What's key for us is how we can support them to take the connectivity burden off them and see where we as SWIFT can play a role to bring single gateway solutions to support the community. Mm. So that's the role that SWIFT is playing. Adeline, if I can ask why, why did the Bank de France get involved with SWIFT on this particular project? And could you fill us in on the role that you guys are playing? Yes, of course. Uh, actually, digitalization uh, in payments, whether retail or wholesale payments, is a long process and gradual process. Um, as it reflects uh, our habits actually as citizens. Uh, so this means that uh, there will no be substitution of platforms uh, or systems or currency. Uh, actually, we will have coexistence of uh, maybe current legacy systems with the new ones and uh, both will play a key role. And uh, so the main challenge uh, will be to, to work on interoperability, as you, you mentioned. And uh, in this context, uh, the Banque de France and all central banks, of course, uh, will have um, twofold objectives. So the first one, of course, um, uh, is to, to issue CBDC. It's in the hand of uh, central banks. Um, and the second one, uh, as public actors, uh, is to Caref to, to carefully follow the, the, the governance of these new platforms. And uh, that's why it was very important for us to be embarked in all these projects um, and to work with uh, SWIFT as a, a major players uh, in the financial system. And Carmen, can you talk about Santander's uh, involvement? Uh, they're participating in the second phase of the uh, CBDC sandbox testing with SWIFT. So why did Santander decide to, to join and, and what's what has this involved just on a practical level? Okay, so we decided to join because we thought it was a unique opportunity to uh, in, be involved in creating something new. Because there are many initiatives on CBDCs, but not that many and their interoperability of this. Also, we wanted to learn, to tell you the truth, to, t to learn from the, from the group, from the different entities working there, public, financial, uh, market infrastructures. So we thought it was a unique opportunity to learn, to get the experience from the different teams, the different points of views, and we have found the process a, a, a very good collaborative effort. And in terms of involvement, um, mainly is attending meetings, is participating, is participating in the definition of the different flows and everything, and on the operational, on the operational flows and, 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 and that kind of thing, and it's very, very enriching. Mm -hmm. Richard, bringing the community together uh, to develop a solution for, for digital uh, currency uh, into operability, um, that must have been a challenge in itself. Uh, why, why do you think this was an important step for SWIFT to make? Cheers, great question. You know, SWIFT's a community. Uh, as you can see by Cybos, just the sheer number of participants here from a range of different areas. So just that community aspect is a fundamental driver for why we wanted to ensure that we had a, device, a diverse range of inputs into this work. So we really looked at this from two, re two sort of perspectives. Geographically, we have a huge community that's covering a range of different regions. Each of those regions and each of those jurisdictions have their own idiosyncrasies, they have their own characteristics. So it was important for us to ensure that we captured the voice of the participants in that space. More granularly, it was also important to us to ensure that we had diversity of participant. As you can see just on the panel here, we have central banks, we have market infrastructures fundamentally key as a, as a participant. But we also wanted to ensure that we brought in the local FIs as well as the global financial institutions who have a larger role to play in this. So for us, bringing all those voices together allowed us to understand both through the beta testing as well as some of the work that we're doing in the sandbox. Most importantly, 
we're actually understanding the commonalities of models that occur or that will be required to, to support these uh, communities. More importantly, we're able to identify the core set of requirements that will support the bulk of our community, but more importantly, understand those unique characteristics that we need to be mindful of as SWIFT to ensure that we're bringing that inclusivity in. So for us, it was absolutely key that to really have trust and faith in a comprehensive solution that we could take to the market and to the community that we brought all the voices and all the people along the journey. So Adeline, SWIFT has provided a platform, right, for central and commercial banks to innovate together. What's been the benefit uh, of that collaborative uh, innovation? Actually, retail and wholesale payment are interestingly uh, intertwined. And public and private actors uh, are embarked together in this uh, journey with SWIFT um, for improving uh, payments, uh, domestic and cross-border and cross-currency payments. And the experiment launched by SWIFT uh, is unique in that sense, as um, uh, SWIFT have been designed from the start uh, actually uh, um, as a partnership embarking a broad uh, and a large ecosystem. Uh, and I could say that it's part of the uh, uh, DNA of SWIFT with of course transparency and uh, financial integrity. Carmen, if I can put you on the spot, uh, key things you've learned so far on this journey? I guess our main learning is that uh, it's not only about technology. So in the end, we will make technology to work and we will find a, a, an efficient design to make the interoperability. But there are so many other aspects to take into account, not only technology, mainly regulatory, but I would like to highlight the operational, uh, operational impact in our, operation, in our operational models. So in the end, we are creating, as mentioned before, a full new landscape of instant payments. And we will need to shape our organizations to support this. We will need to shape our teams, our organization, our control models, or even our operating hours. So that will be the, the main learning. And Richard, what's next for SWIFT and your CBDC exploration? Sure, as you were seen on the agenda for Cybos this week, there's a lot of discussion about CB CBDCs. It's, a, it's an exciting topic. I think for SWIFT, in terms of what's coming next, we have a number of sessions actually planned here for Cybos with a number of our participants from the various sandbox uh, working groups that we have to ensure that we're staying on point, that we're really listening to them and understanding what their priorities are so that we can direct the work, direct the effort exactly where we need to. But I think more broadly, post the work that we're doing both on the beta testing as well as some of the work we're doing with the sandbox, what's most important for us is to re-engage with those working groups, really understand the models and the implementation and adoption challenges required that we need to overcome as a group to really deploy that into like real life production environments and really just bring something to life for the community. I think a key part of that and uh, of bringing that to life is bringing and surfacing new learnings that uh, production environments will bring, bring to us that, you know, sort of testing may not necessarily uh, bring about. More importantly, and I think Carmen touched on this perfectly, it's about understanding the role the participants are going to play in that new ecosystem, in that new world. And then fundamentally, it's really about how do we expedite delivery of a solution that will work for the community as a whole as quickly as possible. An important collaboration. Uh, we thank the three of you for taking the time to stop by here on Cyboss TV. Uh, Richard Ross, payment market infrastructure expert, Europe Swift. Uh, Adeline Bachelary, Deputy Director of Innovation and Financial Market Infrastructures at the Banque de France, and Carmen Ray, Swift Global Product Owner at Banco Santander. Thanks to all three of you for being with us. Thanks to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.